Hi, my name is Jaren Lemke, and I'm going to be walking you through how to build a standalone executable for the LGSVL simulator. The documentation is available on the website under that title if you want to follow along. The first thing you're going to want to do is install Unity Hub. This will be able to keep track of all of your versions of Unity and all of your Unity projects. You're going to click this link right here where it says download and install Unity Hub. And you're going to click the green button that says download Unity Hub. When Unity Hub Setup.exe is finished downloading, click it in the downloads bar. It may ask for the app to make changes to your device. Just click yes. It's going to ask you to agree to a license agreement. Click I agree. And the destination folder, if you want a custom folder, you can designate it here. Otherwise, just keep it the way it is. Click install. And just click finish. In the tab that opens immediately, it's going to show all of your Unity projects. I have some projects that I previously worked on. If you go to the Installs tab on the left, it'll show you all your installs and their plugins. I also have some versions of Unity pre-installed. The one that we're going to be wanting is 2019.3.3 F1. You're going to click this link that goes to the Unity Download Archive. And you're going to scroll down until you see 2019.3.3 this right here. Click the green button that has a little download symbol and says Unity Hub. It's going to ask to open Unity Hub and it should bring up a window where you can add modules to your install. What's really important is you've got to make sure that you have Linux build support mono and Windows build support. As an optional addition you can add Microsoft Visual Studio Community and then whatever version for the year that you're doing this. That will add integration for a programming IDE called Visual Studio and will allow for easier debugging. Once you have all the necessary modules, click install. So once Unity version 2019.3.3 F1 is finished being installed, you should have Linux build support mono and Windows build support. If you don't have both of those, then click the three dots in the top right of your installation here and click add modules and add any modules that you forgot to install in the beginning of the installation process. The next step is going to be installing node.js. The documentation says that version 12.16.1 long-term support is fine, but any version 12 long-term support will work. So click the link here that says node.js and click the link on the left for the recommended version. When it's finished downloading, you should see it on the download bar. Click the installer to start the installation process. Click next, accept the terms, next, and you can either choose a custom folder to install Node.js to, or you can leave it as it is. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Click next, next, next. May ask for permission to make changes to your device, click yes. When it's done installing, click finish. You've now installed Node.js. To verify that you've installed the correct version, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and press R. It should bring up a little run box here and type in CMD. This should bring up a terminal window and you're going to want to type in Node-Version. It should print out the version of Node.js that you've just finished installing. For the sake of this video, we're going to assume you already have Git LFS installed. If you do not, go to the documentation for building and click this link right here for instructions on installation. The next step is to clone the actual simulator from GitHub. How you do this is you're going to want to open up your command prompt again, and you're going to put your command prompt in a directory that you want to install the simulator within. If you don't know how to do this, you're going to open up your Windows Explorer, navigate to any folder you want, and click the little folder icon in the path. It should open up an actual text uh, path right here. And you can copy this, type CD, and then paste in that path, and your command prompt will now be in that path. Next, you've just got to copy this command right here from the documentation and paste it into your command prompt. It's now cloning the simulator into that folder. Once it's done, to verify that it worked, 
open up the folder that you tried to install it into, and there should be a simulator folder in here now. Double click on the simulator folder, and go into assets, and then materials, and then environment materials, and you should see an environment damage albedo.png. If you open the image, it should be a concrete looking gray square. If the image cannot be opened, then you may have incorrectly installed or not installed git lfs. Refer to step 4. Next, you're going to run Unity Hub. It should open up to the Projects tab. You're going to click the white Add button and navigate to where you just installed LGS VL Simulator. Once you've added Simulator to your Projects tab, you're going to make sure that the Unity version for Simulator shows as 2019.3.3f1. Click the name of the project to open it up in Unity. Once Unity is open, you're going to go into Windows Explorer, back into the folder that you were in, and you're going to go back to the Simulator folder, where you're going to find the Web UI folder. You're going to double click this, and you're going to get the path again, copy it, go back to your terminal here, and you're going to type CD and then paste that in. Your command prompt should now be navigated to the web UI folder. You're going to type npm install. Once that's done, you're going to go back to the Unity editor. You're going to go to simulator and build web UI. You're going to click this. When that's done, you're going to go back up to simulator and click build. This should bring up a menu called Build Maps and Vehicles. Underneath Environments, Vehicles, Sensors, and Controllables should be the asset bundles that you've pulled from other GitHub repos. These are not going to be already installed with the simulator. You're going to have to do that separately. There are separate documentations and videos on how to do that. For the sake of this video, I'm going to install a couple random ones. So here, as you can see, I've installed Cubetown in the Jaguar 2015 XE as environments and vehicles. And now I'm going to select a folder to build the simulator into. I'm going to use LGSVL simulator and make a new folder called build. I'm going to select this folder and click build. When this is finished, navigate to where you built the simulator and double click simulator.exe. It should open to a page like this. You can click the settings in the top right and configure your settings as you want. Next, click open browser. It should open a page like this. In the maps tab, click add new and put in the URL to an environment. So once an asset bundle has already been built for LGS VL simulator, it can be uploaded and downloaded by other people for use within the simulator. I've already added Cubetown as a map and the Jaguar XE 2015 as a vehicle. If you're wondering how to do this, you click Add New. Under Map Name, you put in whatever name you want. And in Map URL, you can go to content.lgsvlsimulator.com and click on one of these that you're interested in. There's a view all if you want to see more. And the asset bundle link right here, you're going to right click on it and click copy link address. And you're going to paste it in here. So I, I just pasted in a car into the map, but you paste in maps into the maps category and you paste in vehicle URLs into the vehicles category. To enable driving, go to vehicles and click the wrench in the top right of your vehicle. And I already have one pasted in. But if you go on the documentation, you can copy this right here in JSON format and paste it in, and it'll allow you to drive the car manually and click Submit. Next, go to Simulations and click Add New. You can name the simulation whatever you want. I already have like Cube Town in here, so I'm going to name this Cube Town V2. Then you're going to go to Map and Vehicles and click Run Simulation in Interactive Mode. You're going to select the map that you want and select the vehicle and then you're just going to click submit. Next, you're going to click the simulation here, so that there's a little check mark in the top right, and you're going to click the play button in the bottom right. Now go back to your built LGSVL app, and you should have your car in your scene. If you press play here, you can control it and drive it around your scene, and you've successfully built 
the LGSVL simulator as a standalone application. Thank you.